Hey, Coach, we've got a fantastic guest tonight. Shay Townsend is the offensive coordinator at Swansboro High School. He is a Lincoln Riley disciple, uh, a big time air raid guy. I, I actually uh, I, I found Shay on his YouTube channel. And uh, Shay, I didn't tell you this, but you know Ron Mackey uh, kind of found my channel when I was first starting out, and he brought me on and promoted me. So whenever I see someone who's getting after it on on YouTube, I always like to jump in there and and give him a little promotion. It, it won't give you as big a bounce as uh, Ron gave me, but at least it'll give you a little little few more eyes on you. Because I tell you what, you did one on Rouse on Air uh, that I found, and it was uh, num number one. It was uh, elite, high quality stuff. But you, you gave me a great idea just watching it. It kind of sparked some ideas for me. So, man, I appreciate you being on here and, and talk about your channel real quick, and then we'll jump into your presentation. All right. Uh, yeah, I kind of started out, you know, just making videos uh, for my players of just all our concepts during all this quarantine. And then um, I actually wrote an article that was on the Eastern North Carolina Football Coaches Association site about installing the air raid at the high school level and that kind of I started getting you know questions and emails from all coaches all over the country asking me about play calling and how we do this and that so then I started making some videos to put them on YouTube just to kind of push out to them and um, just kind of it's been great for networking and meeting coaches and kind of bouncing stuff off each other so I've really enjoyed it and what and uh, what what's your what's the name of the channel it's, if you go to YouTube, it's just Shea Townsend, S-H-E-A-T-O-W-N-S-E-N-D, and it'll have our little Swansboro High School little S logo on there. And, I, and I'll put it in the in the show notes, but just a, a high quality. You do a great job with it. Like I said, I watched the uh, the routes on air one, and then I pulled up the the play calling one. I haven't watched it yet, but uh, – but well, actually, I started it and I haven't I haven't finished it yet. But I'm excited about that one. Uh, so, man, I'm sure to appreciate you being on here. Uh, Shay's gonna talk about air raid drills and uh, and and how you uh, have high efficiency with them. And buddy, I'm I'm excited to to learn from you, man. All right, excited to get started, Coach. I've really enjoyed your channel as well. This so should I go ahead and share? Yep, go ahead. All right, so kind of how I have. Uh, kind of have it broken down by e each drill we try to do every day. So our first one, um, pat and go, and I know you know this as good as, you know, any air raid coach, especially back with Hal Mummy and those guys. But uh, the way, so we always start practice with this and you, you know how it's set up. You've got a quarterback on one end, a quarterback on the other end. You've got a line of receivers, a line of receivers, and it's kind of just like a nice and easy get your quarterback in a rhythm, your receivers catching routes. And we actually met as a staff um, before the season this year. And we, we it kind of hit us like, you know, we've done the same routes during pat and go for the last eight years, even on days we're not even doing anything with those routes. So we, we kind of said, look, we want everything we do in every drill to kind of build up to what we're trying to focus on that day. So pat and go for us now has become, you know, on Monday if we're working on mesh and shallow cross, all our pat and go warm up routes will be ones in the in those two concepts. So still our quarterbacks are throwing the routes we want them to throw. Our receivers are warming up, catching those same routes. Uh, so just kind of our bullet points on pat and go. Um, if coaches don't do this or haven't heard of it, if you're an air raid guy, I know you know what it is, but go research. It's just a great way to start practice to kind of get everybody in a rhythm. It's nice and easy warm up. It, and like I said before, we like to incorporate those routes that we're focusing on that day. Get your quarterbacks warmed up on routes that they will be throwing that day or focusing on. Get your wide receivers warmed up, specifically running the routes that they'll be running that day. And this is where we like to make our coaching kind of corrections and pointers. Like if, you know, you, a guy's running a route and you want to tweak it right there, this is the place to do it so you're not wasting time later in practice. Like when you're nice and easy warming up, go ahead and try to get them right. And then when you get into your other stuff and try to build up the team and stuff, they've, they've got it at that point. So that's, that's how we start practice. That's our pat and go. Um, the next one... I can get to the next uh, settle a noose again. You know, uh, air raid 
drill that's as old as the offense, uh, but kind of with so many concepts in our offense that require you to, you know, find a zone, settle up in noose. This is something that we that we drill and want to do every single day, just so they, you know, they it's ingrained in them. So just a, some of the pointers there, our quarterbacks like to keep their feet moving and kind of moving with the receiver so that when they do settle up in noose, they're about as in front of them as they can. Wide receivers are really doing this at a slow pace and just focusing on sticking that foot in the ground. And we, we even say, you know, I want to hear that foot, like overemphasize it, like stick it in the ground. Um, and, and then the focus on, you know, after you catch it, we want to, if we're sitting between two linebackers, when I catch that ball, I want to drop straight back, straight up field. I don't want to bend my body towards either one of those defenders because that could be the difference in, you know, us getting tackled and us scoring an ADR touchdown. So that just things we drill and drill and drill. And again, this is another one where in a short period of time, you're just getting players a lot of reps on a very, very essential skill needed for this for this offense in general. And, and actually, the first day of practice, we had two, you know, two stations set up. We're only in our second. We had our second day of practice today, but we had two set settling new stations set up. And you, coach, you know as well as anybody at the high school level, the first day of tryouts or whatever, everybody's going to the receiver line. So, I mean, there's 50 kids in each one. And after practice, all us coaches got together and said, selling news, we got to add more stations. So we did that. We had a, about three or four stations. And now those guys are catching, a, you know, they were getting maybe three catches total yesterday. They probably, you know, tripled that today easily. So they're getting a lot more reps of that. So. Settle a noose again for you air raid guys. If you haven't incorporated this or know what it is, please go research it. Uh, the next one is kind of routes on air. And this is the one I'll kind of show you our clips on. Th this is what we want to spend the, the meat of our, our offensive practice on. And the reason is, is it's, it, it gets so many reps so quickly at, a, at the concepts that you're focusing on that day. So I know a lot of air raid guys believe this and it, it's kind of what we believe too is we, we break it up every day. So Monday, when we come up with our practice script, you know, we come up with two dropbacks that we want to work on, one quick game and then our one run for that day. So for instance, yesterday was mesh and shallow cross and uh, Y stick. So those are the three that we're doing during routes on air. We're just repping it, repping it, repping it, repping it, repping it. We're running mesh out of ACE. We're running mesh out of three by one. So those kids are getting reps running every route out of every formation that we possibly have. Because coach, I know if you're like us, we're really in this COVID season, we're really trimming the fat. So as many ways that we can run mesh and get creative with it and eliminate it, trying to install other stuff, we're gonna to try to find creative ways to do that. So, you know, another key for you RA guys, run a small amount of plays, do them out of different formations and use motion and things like that. It's the same play over and over, but to the defense, it looks like a hundred different plays now. Your guys get really good at the same thing the defense doesn't know what's going on, especially with mesh. You got guys going deep, going across their face, and then you throw different formations and motions. And especially at the high school level, they don't know what's going on. So, um, so we would, the way it's set up, our quarterbacks are throwing every route and every concept at a very quick pace. Our wide receivers are catching every route in that concept out of different formations. It allows you to get a lot of reps in a small amount of time. The quarterback, and here's where we kind of tweak this one, Coach. Um, and my quarterback this year is actually the one that brought it up to me. And he's a really, really smart kid, uh, 4.0 kid. He threw for 2,500 yards last year and 22 touchdowns. So he, he's a student of the game. He wants to know why do we do this and how we can make this better. So he said, coach, if I'm the first quarterback throwing 
you know, our first read on mesh, which is a six step speed cut, you know, I throw that route and then I kind of just sit there. Why don't I keep my feet going and get my feet to my second route, third route, fourth route, and my last route, just so his feet get, it's ingrained in his body. Even after he's already thrown the ball, he's getting mental reps after that. And that has been huge. So then when he slides over and now he's the second quarterback. I love that one, man. That, that's, that's big time. I love that idea. Oh, yeah. So that so going back to we're, we're finding reps wherever we can, whether it's physical, mental, wherever. And th- just an outstanding kid that, you know, just wants to get so much better at this. And so now he slides over. He's the second quarterback throwing. So now he's going to read his first route, throw his second route, and then still go look at his third, look at his fourth, and look at his fifth. And I'll kind of point that out when I kind of show you the uh, the clips here, but you'll kind of see him getting those mental reps in. All right, so here's kind of the diagram. So um, down here we've, we've got – now I've got QBs in these circles. If you're at a, a smaller school like, you know, we are, one of these is going to be a quarterback. You're lucky if you have two. You're real lucky if you have three, and then the rest of them are just coaches filling in so those receivers are catching balls. So the day that I actually have filmed here, um, our other quarterback was at had a basketball game that night. So you're going to see our starting quarterback and then three, co- three coaches throwing the other routes and one coach throwing to the back. So the way this is set up is um, – these orange things now in college they were pop-ups they you know you got a little more money to spend that we would slide the pop-ups all over the place um we use trash cans we flip them over and and you can set this up however you want so we kind of just had like a generic you know cover cover two here so the way we run mesh our first read is our z and he's a six step speed cut out and the reason we have that as a six-step speed cut is because with a three-step drop and turn, it times out perfect. Where right when he's coming out of that break, he's receiving the ball where he has time to find the sideline and get upfield. So if our quarterback drops back, he reads Z on that speed cut, he's already in rhythm, he gets the ball out. If that corner comes down and that's covered, we throw to our back second. Now, I, I've been in a lot of conversations with coaches, and there's a million ways to run mesh. And in college, um, Lincoln Riley, he always read the mesh as the second read. So if the, fir- the first thing we were throwing wasn't there, you always come back to the mesh, and they read it as a whole. So I, I, I split it up, but they read it as a whole. So we go Z, 2, and then we come back because we're assuming if the two's not there that that backer is out of that and then we're hitting our three right there. And we break it down to one, two, three. So the way we run mesh is we're setting up that, you know, 96 bull Phil Jackson off- offense where we're, you know, giving them the old triangle. We're flooding the zone with three guys and on hopefully two defenders. So we go three. If this guy slides over, then you've got your backside uh, – mesh guy and and here's where we differ from a lot of guys and i'll kind of tell you my philosophy on why we do mesh like this just so you kind of understand the when when you see the clips we do a must outside release take two route where we're just trying to clear that corner and that safety out of there we a lot of guys mirror this and we'll also run a six-step speed cut but what we'll do is we'll always do that on the backside only for the sole purpose of data data has shown us that we never get to that fifth read unless it's an absolute breakdown. So by, you know, getting him up the numbers, you're going to kind of space out that corner and that safety. So if you do settle up a noose on four, he can catch it and get upfield and hopefully nobody's right there. So basically we're just trying to spread out our conceptual picture here and keep those guys out of the picture is what we're doing. So our first quarterback, and all this is at one time, we're snapping the ball and we're throwing five balls in progression at once. So the quarterback's gonna throw, and then like I said, he'll still get his mental reps. Our coach will always just throw our back. 
this quarterback, our coach, would then just throw this whole shot right here on the settling noose. This quarterback would get the, the measure right here, settling. And then this quarterback would throw our backside five. And, and what, I know Lincoln Riley was real big on this, especially with Baker Mayfield when they ran routes on air is, if you're throwing that last progression, you're not just three step dropping and sitting in there and throwing it comfortably. Like if we get back to this guy in the progression, something has happened. So simulate that, whether you're rolling out, whether you're stepping up and sprinting out just to get, you know, some practice in what would, what a live situation might look like. All right. And then I'll kind of uh, show you how we've adjusted this, which we think is a great little, um, tweak to this to this drill so let me pull up my uh i'll go ahead and show you those clips real quick all right so our quarterback is right here in the red jersey so he and then this is a coach a coach a coach and a coach thrown the back so this first one is mesh so you'll see our our z running the speed cut our two inside guys meshing and settling up in between the linebackers. And then our, our X over here is just running, like we said, that must outside release, take two. So don't put too much emphasis when watching this on the other guys, because we're not really using footwork and throwing in progression, just kind of focus on the quarterback because he's the one that's going through his reads. So, but notice, like I said before, he's going to throw this first read over here and then watch him still get his feet to a second, third, fourth, and fifth read. So I kind of play this through. Everybody's dropping back. He makes his first throw. He gets his feet there, there, and then his last route right there. So again, like what we said, now these guys are all going to rotate. This is the first day of practice. So you're going to see our our guys rotate down. So all of these guys are gonna run every route in this progression on the first day. And then once we kind of figure out, you know, who's our H, who's our Z, who's our Y, who's our, our X and so forth, then they can more so stay at those positions and get more reps at it. But it's never a bad idea for them to learn every route in the progression. Cause if you don't have a lot of depth like we do, I mean, your X could be your Y one game, your Y could be your Z one game, you just never know. So again, here's that first clip. Again, I'll, I'll run it through. And like I also said, Coach, don't, don't judge me too much on this because I got a freshman, two sophomores, and then this is a, a receiver because a lot of guys were at basketball. So <laughs> a lot of young guys running this. So there he is, he'll throw his speed cut again, and then still go through his progressions. All right, so now this is the second rep at this. Now our, our Z has moved down to Y, and this guy's rotated over, and these guys have rotated down. So now notice our quarterback, he'll still look for his first route. He'll look for his second route, and he's actually gonna throw the third route right here, and then he'll still go through his mental reps on the back end of his throw as well. All right, so we're on our third rep right now of this play. So now these guys have all rotated down. Our quarterback's rotated down. So he's now the fourth, fourth to the fourth progression in this. And he'll still get his mental reps before he throws and then come right back to his, uh, his backside mesh guy right there. And again, we still, again, try to emphasize settling noose a lot of these guys are young. They hadn't got the concept of, you know, after you catch it, give me five or 10 yards afterwards. All right. And so now we're on the, the last progression. So kind of like I said, try to simulate if we were throwing that fifth progression, what it would look like in a game. So we'll kind of see what he does here. I'm not real sure what I hadn't really watched too much of this. So, so now he'll go through every progression and then end up throwing his fifth read right here. All right, so now, so now, so that, let me just go back one real quick. 
Okay, so now when you run mesh, now I know that Mike Leach has started doing this and it's a great idea. Um, if you're gonna do this, you can go through it one time with the cans because your guys know in zone, you know, we're finding open our open space in there in the mesh and we're sitting down. But we all know that in mesh, in a man coverage, they're gonna continue running to the sideline. So what, what we do, on days when we don't have three of our coaches uh, throwing the ball, two of these guys would take the place of these outside linebacker cans. And now they're either gonna drop zone or they're gonna run man. So now you're getting a ton of reps, but our guys don't leave the line right here knowing they're settling. They're either settling or they're running and they're just getting reps of, you know, in the game, man, I'm running, zone, I'm sitting. So we like to do that too on uh, on meshes, replace these guys with coaches and then simulate more of that game-like situation. All right, so this, I think it's just a different concept of the same thing. Um, so this was yesterday, I think our second drop back that we worked on was shallow. So the way, and you can run shallow, you know, a million different ways too, especially with these outside guys. I think we have this guy just clearing out, take two more route. Our, our, our why we like them extra shallow, like almost coming down the line. Cause we really want this, this backer right here to have to make a decision. If he's gonna take that shallow, he's gonna have to move to take him. He's not gonna be able to sit there and you know, cover two guys at once. So you'll see our H over here, he'll release out around for a dig. And if it's a dig, he would keep continuing but he, in a zone, he's gonna settle up right in there. So we're picking on this guy right here. And then I think we just have a post on top of the, uh, on top of our, uh, our little dig sit right there in case that safety starts coming down on it. So again, you'll see our quarterback, he's making his progressions and I'm not sure what happened there on the throw. <laughs> Maybe this one will be better, but he's going through his reads. Everybody's, you know, getting balls, getting a lot of reps going through the next progression, making our throws, just getting reps at it. Okay, now here, so that was routes on there. So now this is where we've really started to like um, tweak things a little bit because Randy, Larry, I know like old school um, air raid, how mummy that was, you know, your right and left quick screens or screens. So the Randy, Larry drill, was just a rapid pace, you know, catch, throw to the right, catch, throw to the left, catch, throw to the right, catch, throw to the left. So your quarterback's just, you know, repping, getting his hips around on quick screens, which is great. And we still do that as well. I just want to show you kind of how we tweaked it. And the re reason you would do this is if you have one quarterback and you don't have even three coaches that can throw the ball. So if you got like one co one quarterback and that's it, this is a way to get a lot of reps in your concepts by just um, rapid pace. So now we're gonna snap the ball. I, I think this concept that we're in right now is Y cross if I'm not mistaken. So he's gonna must outside release, peak the outside guy. His second route's gonna be his option route, which is I think in this case with this coverage will be a three yard speed cut. His third route is gonna be his Y cross with the Y. And then the fourth route, um, our receiver is gonna come at this safety and then sit like a little comeback right here. So he's gonna do this really fast through the progression. So he's gonna drop back. He's gonna hit his first, he's gonna take his shot cause he just absolutely loves it. He's gonna reset and then he's right back. First read, he's boom, he's hitting the speed out. Coming right back, he's still gonna go through his reads. Then he's gonna come back. He's gonna hit that pipe shot because the safety stayed on the hash on Y cross. And then he's gonna go through, go through and then come back to his last progression which would just be the receiver. The receiver should have came more of in that window. And then I think the video cuts off here but then we just run, you know, your, your shoot would be your last check down. So I'll kind of run that again. So it's basically the same concept as the Randy Larry drill where you're just throwing at a rapid pace, except now we've taken a concept 
and we're throwing it still in the progression. So he's going to drop back, throw his first read, drop back, throw a second read, third read, fourth read. And then it's always a good idea, you know, just to switch things up to change these guys. You can maybe, you know, turn these into a cover three, turn these into a cover, uh, a man look, cover two, whatever, whatever you prefer. If you can run through all the coverages, that's great. If you're game planning for a team you see on film that is a heavy cover two team, then I would do my routes on there. And a lot of the meat of that, um, you know, against the cover two that week. But as air raid guys, you know, we want to tell ourselves um, we're not thinking about what the defense is doing. We're worried about ourselves because our guys know what to do against everything. So when it gets to that, you're set. But try to have your guys know what they're doing in every concept in every situation. And then that takes the thinking out of it when they're running the play. When you can get the thinking out, then that's when you start to speed up your gameplay. So again, I'll just run this again. And our Y cross, the safety stays on the hash. So he, he that's his first route. He loves it. He's going out to a speed out. His third one, he's going to peak, peak the fade, the out. And then right there, you know, I, with this guy, and and I'll kind of explain this too. It's always good on this. You can replace these guys, these cans with coaches and have those safeties give them a look. Because if that safety, you know, would have went to like a cover two more over here, then that wide cross would have came back more in that hole. So just to give them more looks. And then our quarterback, and then he'll come back to his last route, which we don't complete. And that's our the, the only varsity returner we have right there is the only one that can't catch it. <laughs> so that's kind of how we do our uh, our Randy Larry right there. And I think that was that was the, the gist of the clips that I had. So just kind of going back to this um, chart or this diagram, it's nice if you can have snappers, even if they're managers, on the knee snapping just so your your quarterback's always getting a true snap and not just starting with the ball. In the video you saw, um, we, we clearly we started with the ball. It'll be a little bit better as, as the season progresses. And then again, like I said, with these guys, like if you run mesh one week against this, change it the next week to a cover three, just so they know where the holes are in that coverage. Change it to, you know, the next week to something else. And again, as much as you can on mesh, replace these cans with even coaches and just have them, you know, start and drop back or follow. Just so these guys are, aren't getting in the habit of, you know, I'm settling up every time on mesh because that's not the reality of it. In high school, a lot of times you get defenses that don't know what they're doing and one guy's running and one guy's sitting and you got one guy sitting in one guy running the shallow because the defense is all out of whack. So again, this is, this is how we like to get a lot of reps in practice. It, it's very good for days where you're just like helmet or helmet and shoulder pads and you're not doing a lot of team hitting to where you spend a lot more time on this. And then you run mesh like this, you run mesh out of what we call early, which is trips, run mesh out of deuce, which is our two back set run mesh out of empty and then just get those guys so many reps at it where they know how to run mesh in their sleep. So that's kind of our routes on air. And the last one, uh, this is a big one that we, we started to focus on too, is we just talked about, you know, how to find reps and maximize reps in practice. But this year we're focusing on where do you, where do you find those reps outside of practice? So one thing that we've done, and Coach, maybe you can give me a little more insight on how this started or if it started with how Mummy. I know when Lincoln and those guys came from Texas Tech that tennis, catching tennis balls was a huge thing. I mean, our guys couldn't leave, leave practice until they caught 50 tennis balls before they walked out of the gate. And, I mean, we were shooting them at them too. So we keep a tennis ball machine. Go ask your tennis coach if you can borrow it when – seasons out, keep it in the weight room. If you're a teacher, fortunate enough to teach and be around your kids all day, 
any receiver that I have in class or in the weight room, he's not going to get dressed out at the end of class until he goes in there and catches his tennis balls. And then like we talked about with um, mental reps, if you have your quarterback in a class, when he walks into class, have mesh drawn up against all these defenses and have him, you know, just give you some mental reps. So throughout the day, try to find those reps outside of practice too. But I would, I would, I've seen a huge difference with, since we started catching tennis balls. So if you guys can find an old beat up one, ours is really old too. We have to shake it about every time we use it, but wear that thing out, man, because catching a tennis ball just, it makes you zone in so much and it makes you focus and it makes you, it makes you develop soft hands because you can't have hard hands catching a tennis ball coming at you at a, at a high speed. So those are the ways we find our reps outside of practice, coach. That's, you know, you just reminded me of that. I used to, uh, I used to have a tennis ball machine everywhere I was. I think they started that when they were at Kentucky, they had some old racquetball courts and they would, they set up tennis ball machines and did them in there. But I, I'd gotten out of the habit of doing it, so that I'm glad you said that because I need I need to get I need to dig up a tennis ball machine and start catching tennis balls again. Man, that that was a fantastic presentation. I, I tell you, man, you're uh, you you got this thing wired in at a high level. We didn't talk about it. I, Shay, I mean, I know Shay looks like he's 16 years old, but he's he's been the the offensive coordinator there at Swansboro for eight years. And talk about how you your background at at uh, ECU. You actually were there with Lincoln. So, so talk about yeah. that a little bit. So I was actually, I started out as an equipment manager and I just wanted to be around the team when I went to ECU. And then it kind of turned into a develop where, you know, it's, it was more of like taking on student coaching responsibilities, just where, you know, I just wanted to learn from these guys. I didn't care how I got my foot in the door. So I was actually um, under Skip Holtz for, the first three years and learned a lot there. Um, the offense was a, a completely different. And then towards the end of my college, when I, I think going into my senior year um, is when Skip Holtz went to UCF and Ruffin McNeil took the job at ECU. And I still worked for the team at the time. And I knew about the offense that Mike Leach ran. I didn't know who Lincoln Riley was at the time. So when I found out, you know, Ruff's bringing a lot of that staff, at Dennis Simmons, who's probably one of the best college receiving coaches in the game. He's the receiving coach or the receivers coach at Oklahoma right now. I started out under him for a whole year. So I was the guy there, you know, setting up, selling news for him, help, helping him catch passes, helping him throw passes just learning everything I could about all these different drills. And then my last semester there, it was actually a spring before I graduated. Um, at that point, we all knew that Lincoln Riley would not be there very long because we just knew that this guy was a genius and what he came in and the knowledge he had was just, it was mind blowing. So I, my last spring, I, I said, that's who I want to be around as much as I can. So put me with him, I'll do, I'll get his coffee, whatever you need me to do, I just want to learn from him. So that last spring, I was with him and the quarterbacks and, you know, just learning med ball drills and all that good stuff. He would even sometimes, if he wanted to go get water or something, he would let me take over the drills. And at that point, I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And now he's, you know, as good as it gets at the college level. So I was just fortunate enough to be, at the right place at the right time when those guys came in and just took that opportunity to soak up as much as I could. So I graduated, I actually started out as a receivers coach at um, Richlands High School here in Oslo County where I'm at now. And I was under um, Mike Natoli, who's the head coach at Charlotte Independence. Learned a lot from him. He was a spread option guy. So I kind of learned the air raid, then I learned the option. And then my mom was actually from Swansboro. And so I kept trying to get over there just because I wanted to live at the beach, you know, didn't really know a lot of the coaches. And Coach Natoli left and went to Charlotte Independence. And I said, well, you just call the Swansboro coach and just see if they need any help. And so I came in and at that time they didn't really have a, 
uh, offensive coordinator. They were running like double wing. We had one of the best receivers in the country coming back as a senior who had who actually played at Penn State and was at camp with the Eagles and the Steelers. And we were going into a 3A conference with Havelock and Wes Craven, and we didn't have a line. I said, Coach, we got speed. We're not running right at anybody. We'll go three and out every time. So he kind of liked the ideas that I had about spreading it out, getting those guys in space. And it kind of just took off from there. Um, really, in our area, we either led the area in passing or been right there close to it just because – we're still one of the very few teams around this area that really air it out. So uh, it's developed a lot. You know, my first, I think I, when I started as the offensive coordinator, I was 23, I was scared to death, wasn't ready. Just kind of stuck with it, tweaked things along the way. And eight years later, we're, we're, we're still getting at it, coach. I'll tell you what, man, it shows that you are you know, directly working with those guys at ECU because you, you're really doing things at a high level. You reminded me about the tennis balls, and uh, <laughs> I, I love the uh, the Randy uh, the Randy Larry drill, uh, taking one rep at a time and getting through those routes on air. And and obviously, I already told you, you gave me some, you, you sparked some great ideas just watching your other routes on air video. But you do you do a great job, man. And I sure do appreciate you being on here one more time. Tell them the name of your YouTube channel. Um, just go to YouTube. It's just Shay Townsend, my name. You guys uh, can also email me anytime. It's uh, shay.townsend at onslow.k12.nc.us. Um, you can uh, get up with me on Twitter. It's at coach T underscore 311. Um, contact me anytime if you have any questions or how, how we did things or how they did things back then at East I, I'm, I'll sit here and talk football with you all day. So contact me anytime. We'd love to hear from you. You did a great job, man. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, coach.